Today we are going to start the calculation of least significant difference. So least significant dis difference is the Fisher's least significant test and why it is called Fisher's least significant test because it was developed by Fisher in 1935. And what is the least significant difference or LSD test? This is a post hoc test of ANOVA. Now, what is post hoc test? The post hoc word is from Latin, which means after that, right? So post hoc means after that. So after what? The post hoc here refers to test done after statistical testing, right? So it means that after you're done with your statistical analysis, then you need to do some further analysis, and that is known as the post hoc analysis, right? To further analyze the results of your statistical test or your statistical analysis. So after you have done your statistical analysis, after you have rejected your null hypothesis, and then you want to see uh, further details of the uh, statistical test. And for that purpose, you need to carry on some further analysis, and that is known as the post hoc analysis or the post hoc tests. And these are also termed as a posteriori tests. So a posteriori test means which are performed after the event, right? So after the event, so what is event here? Event is your study or your test. So after you are, you are done with your experiment, after you have done um, collecting the observations and you have performed your statistical analysis, you are done with your statistical test and you have your results. Now you want to further analyze the results and you want to do some corrections in your results. For that purpose, you are going to do post hoc tests. So these tests, they are the tests which are performed after the event. And the event in this case is the study or your statistical test. Examples of the post hoc tests. So we have uh, some post hoc tests which are related to the type 1 error correction. And there are some post hoc tests of ANOVA. So these are the two examples of the post hoc tests that are used in statistical analysis. Remember, these are not your main statistical test, rather you perform your main statistical analysis, you perform your test, and after you find your results of the statistical analysis, then you have to perform the post hoc test, right? These are post hoc, which means after that, after you're done with your statistical analysis, then you need to further analyze or further describe your statistical results. And for that purpose, the test that you perform after your statistical analysis are known as the post hoc tests, right? So let's see examples. Again, the post hoc test related to type 1 error. The question is that why they are needed. And we know that the chances of making type 1 error increase with multiple comparisons. So when we are performing multiple testing or multiple comparisons for a single experiment, then we increase the chances of making type 1 error. And what is a type 1 error? This is a false positive result, which means rejecting null hypothesis when it should be accepted, right? So this is uh, uh, the, the increase in the chances of making type 1 error. Because the level of significance is usually set at 0 0.05. So you reject or accept the null hypothesis deciding at the level of significance of 0 0.05, which means that there is always a 5% chance that you are rejecting your null hypothesis incorrectly. Uh, let's see through a table that if you have two groups and you're performing only one test, then the error rate is 0 0.05, which is scientifically acceptable, right? So this error rate of 0 0.05, it is acceptable. And when you have three groups and you're performing three tests, then the error rate increases to 0.14, which is quite higher, 0 0.05. And when you have four groups, you have to do six tests, and the error rate increases to uh, 0.2649, which means 26.5%. So that is also higher. So as you increase the number of multiple comparisons, your error rate is also increasing until if you have 15 tests to do for six groups, then your error rate is more than 15, 50%, right? So you have an error rate of more than 50% when you're performing 15 tests. And it also increases further and it becomes two third, right? The error rate becomes two third if you have 21 tests to perform. So the chances of making type 1 error are increasing with increasing number of tests. So it doesn't mean that um, 
you're not performing your test or if you don't have an alternate right so sometimes you have alternative tests which can be performed instead of multiple comparisons but sometimes you don't have the alternative test you don't have the omnibus test so you have to do these multiple comparisons so what to do if you have to do these multiple comparisons because the error rate is increasing so you can correct them in the post hoc analysis and the examples that how you can correct the uh, problems related to type 1 error you can do the bond Faraday correction so bond Faraday correction is performed after you are done with your statistical analysis of multiple comparisons so it is performed when multiple independent or dependent comparisons are made and it corrects the alpha level to protect from type 1 error right so let uh, you can see that this test is performed after you are done with your statistical analysis and it is done to correct the um, alpha level to protect from type 1 error then we have another example of the post hoc test related to type 1 error and this is Benjamini Hochberg procedure and this is used to reduce the false discovery rate due to type 1 error right so these are the examples of the post hoc test which are related to type 1 error now remember that these are not your main statistical analysis rather these are the tests which are done after your statistical analysis after your statistical testing right so these are the post hoc tests, which means after that after your analysis now the post hoc test related to ANOVA we'll see certain examples but before that we have to understand that why these tests are needed because ANOVA is the omnibus test omnibus test means that it is about everything so omnibus word is from Latin which means about everything so the post hoc test they mean after that so ANOVA is the omnibus test which is about everything and the post hoc test is from Latin which means after that so post hoc, a post hoc test of ANOVA refers to test done after ANOVA now the question is that if ANOVA is the omnibus test, it is about everything and it, it also reduces the type 1 error, then why do we need the post hoc test? Why we need to do certain analysis after post hoc? So isn't ANOVA sufficient to describe your results? The answer is that ANOVA tells the means are different in overall comparisons. So do you remember the null and alternate hypotheses of ANOVA? The null hypothesis of ANOVA is that the group means or the treatment means are similar and the variances are also equal and the alternate hypothesis is that variances are equal but means are different so the alternate hypothesis of ANOVA states that at least one group mean is different so to be specific that which group mean is different it doesn't tell us right so ANOVA doesn't tell us which specific means are different and we can know that which specific means are different through the post hoc tests. So post hoc tests they tell us that which means are different. So ANOVA is giving us an, um, a significant result in overall comparison and we are rejecting our null hypothesis and we are accepting our alternate hypothesis but the precise statement of the alternate hypothesis in ANOVA is that at least one group mean is different. So it doesn't say that all group means are different from each other and it also doesn't identify that which group means are different right so after we are after we have obtained significant results in ANOVA after we have rejected our null hypothesis then we can find out that which specific group means are different right so ANOVA uh, the post hoc test of ANOVA they are performed only after the rejection of null hypothesis after obtaining statistically significant result of ANOVA and that is why these are referred to as the post hoc test so after your you have done your analysis of variance if you have non significant results then it is clear that all sample means are equal to each other right but if you have your significant results you have rejected your null hypothesis and you have accepted the alternate hypothesis then it means that the means are different in overall comparisons and at least one group mean is significantly different so now you need to figure out that which these means are which are statistically significant from uh, significantly different from each other so you cannot do that through ANOVA because that is giving you an overall comparison so you have to do that through post hoc tests of ANOVA 
So the post hoc tests, the tests which are done after ANOVA, they are performed only after the rejection of null hypothesis because there is no point in doing them if you have accepted your null hypothesis because you have already told that your means are similar, their means are equal. So this is done only if the means are equal and you need to figure out that which means are, are different, right? And now we will further discuss this concept of post hoc test related to ANOVA. So let's see we have an example here of the three samples. And you can see that their mean values are different. The mean value of sample number one is 12, the mean value of sample number two is 13, and the mean value of sample number three is seven. And when ANOVA was performed on this uh, group, or on this experiment, then we found that the ANOVA is significant, right? So ANOVA analysis, it revealed that there is a significant difference in the means. But now the question is that which means are significantly different? Because when we look at these sample means, then we can see that the sample one and two, they're not that much different from each other. But sample number three is quite different from both sample number one and sample number two. So we need to figure out that is the difference between sample one and sample two is significant? Is the difference between sample one and sample three significant? Or is the difference between sample two and three significant, right? So we are going to perform post hoc tests only if we have found significant difference in our ANOVA, right? So because ANOVA is significant, therefore we want to further see that which are those mean pairs which are significantly different from each other. Now, another example, so we have four samples here. The mean of sample number one is 83.6. For sample number two, this is 79.4. For sample number three, this is 78.6. And for sample number four, this is 75.4. So when we perform ANOVA, we find that these means are statistically significantly different from each other. But again, the question is that which means are specifically different from each other, right? Because this is giving us an overall comparison, and our alternate hypothesis was that at least one mean is different. So what is this mean pair which is different? Is it the sample number one and, or sample number two? Is it sample number one or sample number three? Is it sample number one or sample number four? Or this is uh, sample number two, sample number three pair, or sample number two, sample number four, or is there a statistical, uh, statistically significant difference between sample three and sample number four? Or all of these mean pairs are different from each other, right? So now we need to figure out that what is the situation. Then we have another example of three samples, and here also you can see that the mean values are different. And when we performed ANOVA, we found out that these are very highly significantly different from each other. But which means are different, right? Is it the sample number one and two which are highly significantly different from each other? Is it sample number one and three which are significantly different from each other? Or is it sample number two or sample number three which are significantly different from each other, right? So this is the concept of the post hoc test that after you have done your main statistical test, which in this case is ANOVA. So after you are done with your statistical analysis, now you need to further explain your results. So if you have found significant results in ANOVA, if you have found that uh, the means are different in overall comparison, now you need to further find out that which means are specifically different from each other. Because ANOVA is omnibus test, this is going to tell you the overall comparison, but it's not going to tell you that which means are specifically different from each other. So for that purpose, you need to do post hoc tests. And we have different types of post hoc tests related to ANOVA, and these are performed when there is overall significant difference found. And the post hoc tests, they are used to find out which means are significantly different. And the post hoc test, the advantage of using post hoc test is that you usually control the experiment wise error rate as compared to multiple t-tests because when you perform multiple comparisons into t-tests, you have the experiment wise error rate which is very high, you have the increased chances of making type 1 error. But when you perform post hoc tests, so some of the post hoc tests, they have, they, they control the experiment wise error rate. There are some post hoc tests which, doesn't, which do not control the experiment wise error rate, but there are some which actually control the experiment wise error rate. So you can perform these post hoc tests 
without fear of increasing the chances of making type 1 error. And there are a number of tests which are available, but you, you should only use one type of test, right? So it doesn't mean that if you have an option to do more than one type of post hoc test, then you are going to do that one. No. So you have to do the post hoc test, uh, only one type of the post hoc test, right? Examples of the post hoc test which are related to ANOVA are Fisher's least significant difference test. And this is used to test which pairs of means are significantly different. So this is a pairwise comparison. And then we have the Duncan's multiple range test. And this is also used to test which pairs of means are significantly different. So Fisher's least significant difference test and the Duncan's multiple range test, they almost have similar calculations. And the difference is that the Fisher's least significant difference test uses the t-value and the Duncan's multiple range test uses the q-values, right? Otherwise, they, they, their main purpose is saying that they test which pairs of means are significantly different. Then we have the Tucky's Honest Significant Difference, and it tells us that which specific group means are different from each other. And then we have the Tucky Kramer method, and this is used when you have unequal sample sizes, right? So when you have unequal sample sizes, then the Tucky Kramer used can be used instead of Tucky's honest significant difference. Then we have the Games Hall test. And this is used if the data does not meet the assumption of homogeneity of variances, right? Because uh, the assumption or the requirement of ANOVA is that the uh, variances of the different samples or different groups, they should be homogeneous, they should be equal. But if you don't have the observations um, in a way that the variances of the samples are equal or they are homogeneous between groups, then you can perform this test for after you have found significant results in ANOVA. And then we have the Dunnett's correction. And this is used for the comparison of mean values. But how it is different from the others is that instead of comparing means of groups with each other, they are compared to a control mean, right? So in the Dunnett's correction, there is a control mean which is taken and then the rest of the mean values are compared with that control mean. So each of these tests, they have their own advantages and their own um, shortcomings. So you have to decide which test that you are going to use based on your experiment. But you have to use only one type of test. Now, because our main concern is to calculate the least significant difference, so we are going to further concentrate on the Fisher's least significant test or the LST test. So as we discussed that this is a post hoc test of ANOVA and it is done after finding out significant difference between three or more sample means under ANOVA. And this is a multi-step pairwise comparison and it establishes which means are significantly different from each other. And we have an example for calculating LST and this example is the mass of starlings sampled from four different roosting places, reed bed, tree, building, and cliff. So we have four samples. And this is the uh, descriptive statistics and the ANOVA summary, ANOVA results. And we can see that the mean values are different from each other and the ANOVA is highly significantly uh, different. So ANOVA has shown us that the mean values are highly significantly different from each other. But the question is that which mean values are significantly different from each other. So for that purpose, we are performing the LST test. And for that purpose, you have to find out differences between mean sample means. So here we have a table for the calculation of sample means difference. So here we have first pair, which is sample number one and sample number two. So 83.6 minus 79.4, and the difference between this pair of means is 4.2. Then the difference between the pair of means of sample number 1 and sample number 3 is 5. And then the difference between sample number 1 and sample number 4 means 83.6 minus 75.4, so this is 8.2. And then we have the pair sample number 2 and sample number 3, and the difference of this mean pair is 0.8. And then we have sample 2 and sample 4, so 79.4 minus 75.4. So this is the difference between 
the pair of sample number two and sample number four. So this is the difference between their mean values. And finally, we have the mean pair, which is sample number three and sample number four, 78.6 uh, minus 75.4, and we have 3.2. So this is the difference between mean values of sample number three and sample number four. So how many pairs do we have? We have six pairs. So we need to find out which means are significantly different from each other. And we have to calculate the LST to find out that which mean pairs are significantly different from each other. And the main concept for the calculation of LST is to find out least significant difference between two means. As we saw in the previous uh, table that uh, in which we, we, we calculated the difference between mean pairs, right? So we need to find out that how, uh, what is the magnitude of this difference that should be considered significant, right? So we have to find out least significant difference between two means, that at what point we are going to say that these means are significantly different from each other, right? Because we had different values, we had 0.8, we had 4, we had 6, we had 3.2. So which of these values should be considered significant, right? So this is the main concept of the calculation of LSD. So we have these values here. So we have values as low as 0.8 and we have values as high as 8.2. And which one of these values should be considered a significant difference? This is the main purpose of LSD. And if after LSD calculation, we find out that the difference between a pair of means is greater than LSD, then that difference is considered a significant difference, right? So first we calculate these differences between the main pairs and then we calculate LSD and then we compare these values that if the difference between the means is greater than LSD, then that difference is supposed to be significantly different. So let's start the calculations and the formula for LSD is T at V and alpha and the variance within and then we can see that 1 divided by number of observations in sample 1 and 1 divided by number of observations in sample number 2. So here we are going to do the mean wise, the pair wise comparisons. So what is t? This is the t value taken from t distribution table at v which is degree of freedom within and alpha which is our desired level of significance. And this is variance within which is taken from ANOVA table. So you see that this test is performed after you have, you have performed your main statistical test, right? So you're taking the input from your main statistical test and then you are going to calculate the LST. N is the number of observations in a given sample. So because we are doing the pairwise comparison, so we are taking the number of observations in both of the groups that we are comparing in one step. And if the difference between the mean pairs is greater than LSD, then that difference is said to be a significant difference. Now, one important thing is that the tests are conducted for all pairwise comparisons, right? So in the least significant difference, because this is a pairwise comparison, so we have to perform LSD for all pairwise comparisons. So here you see that how many pairs do we have? We have six pairs. So we have to do six pairwise comparisons. And if the number of observations is same in all samples, then we have to calculate only one LSD value and that would suffice, right? So one LSD value is going to be sufficient if we have the number of observations same in all of the groups. Because you see the formula, we have the T value, which is going to remain same because the T value is taken on two parameters, which are the degree of freedom within and the level of significance. So this is not going to change for uh, these pairs. The variance within is not going to change for these pairs, right? Because all of these pairs, they are from the same experiment. But the thing that is going to change is the number of observations, right? Because in each uh, sample pairs, we are going to have different number of observations. But if the number of observations are same in all of the groups, then we don't have to calculate the LSD for all these six pairs of means. So we are going to calculate only one LSD value and that will suffice for all of these six pairs because in the formula the only thing that is different is the number of observations in two samples that are being compared, right? The rest of the two factors, the rest of the two values are going to remain same. So this is 
and you, so your life is easy if you have number of observations equal in all samples. And then another important thing is that these, these tests, they're usually done for different levels of significance. So of course, first of all, the, first of all they're done at the level of significance of 0.05. And this is done for all possible pairwise comparisons. So in the example that we are looking at, we have six pairwise comparisons. So all of these six pairwise comparisons, they are tested for LST at 0 0.05 probability or significance level first, right? And then these are tested at alpha level of 0 0.01. And not all of the pairwise comparisons are made, but only those which are found significant at the 0 0.05 significance level, right? So only those pairs are compared at 0 0.01 level, which were significant at 0 0.05. So at 0 0.05, we have to do them for all, right? But at 0 0.01, we have to do it only for those which were significant at 0 0.05. And then at the next level, which is 0 0.001, we have to perform all those pairwise comparisons which are found significant at 0 0.01, right? And this third step is not performed if you, if you don't have any uh, of the pair means significant at 0 0.01, right? So 0 0.05 is done for all the pairwise comparisons and then 0 0.01 is also done, but this is done only for those samples which are significant at 0 0.05. And then 0 0.001, this is done only if we have some pairs which are significant at 0 0.01 and only those pairs are tested at 0 0.001 level, right? So this is the general procedure by which LSD is done. Now let's calculate LSD. So step number one is to make a table for pairwise differences in means. So this is the table that we have which uh, in, in different cells we have the differences between mean pairs the difference between pair sample number one and sample number two, the difference between sample number one and three, the difference between sample number one and four, and then sample two and three difference, and then sample two and four difference, and sample three and four difference, right? So in step number two, we have to calculate LSD for our first level of significance, which is 0 0.05. And this is the formula, so you see that here the alpha level is now represented by 0 0.05 because we're doing it at a the significance level of 0 0.05. So the example that we are taking, uh, the degree of freedom within is 36 for that example, and the variance within that we took from the ANOVA table of this example is 12.66. And the number of observations in the first group or the first pair of means, which is sample number one and two, is 10 in both, right? So here we have the input, and now we are going to solve it. So 1 by 10 plus 1 by 10, we have 0.2. So this is to be multiplied by 12.66, which is variance within. And the t-value, which is taken from t-distribution table at 36 degree of freedom and 0 0.05 level of significance, we have 2.028. And remember, this t-value is taken from the two-tailed distribution. So now we have 2.532, which is the product of 12.66 and 0.2. We take the square root of this value and now we have to multiply 2.028 with 1.5912 and that is going to be our LSD at 0 0.05 significance level, right? So LSD here is 3.227 which is the least significant difference. And this has to be done for all the pairwise comparisons but because in this example we have the number of observations same in all of the groups. So we don't have to repeat it five times more because the number of observations are same. So when we have calculated this one, this is going to be applicable on all of the six pairs. So in step number three, we have to compare the mean differences with calculated LSD at 0 0.05. So LSD at 0 0.05 is 3.227. Now let's see these pair means one by one. So the first pair mean that we have is sample number one and two, and the difference is 4.2. And we see that this difference is greater than LSD. And remember what we discussed, that if the difference between the means is greater than LSD, then we are going to say that this is significant. So because 4.2 is greater than 3.227, 
Therefore, we are going to place an static over this. Now, what does it, signif uh, uh, what does it uh, notify? It notifies that the results are significant at 0 0.05, right? At probability of 0 0.05. So the single static means that this difference between the, the sample means is significant, right? Now let's see the next uh, difference between the pairs of samples. This is 5. And 5 is also greater than 3.227. So what we ought to do here we are going to place an hysteric, right? And this hysteric notifies that this difference is also significant. Then we have the third pair, which is 8.2. This is also greater, so we are going to place another hysteric here. And then we have sample number two and sample number three pair. And for that purpose, the difference between these um, means is only 0.8, which is less than 3.227. So what we are going to do with that? Are we going to place a hysteric? No because this is not significant. So how we are going to notify this one is through NS. So NS means non-significant, right? So it means that this difference in the pair of means is non-significant. Then the next one is also higher, so this is also significant. And then we have an interesting case of the last pair of means, and the difference is 3.2. Now here, this difference is equal to LST. LST is also 3.2 and this difference is also 3.2. So what we are going to do with this is we are going to declare it non-significant because remember we discussed that if the difference between the means is greater than LST only then we have to say that this difference is significant. But in this case this is equal to LST therefore we are designating this one as non-significant. right? So this is how we do it at the first level of significance which is 0.05. Now the next step is to repeat this comparison for the significance level of 0 0.01. But remember that this has to be done only for those pairs which are significant at 0 0.05 probability level. Because uh, the, the first comparison which is at 0 0.05, that is done for all pair means, right? But those pairs which are non-significant at that level, they are not going to be analyzed further at 0 0.01 one because they are already non-significant. So at this stage we are going to compare only those pairs which are significant at 0 0.05. And this is the same formula and the difference is going to be the t value which is now taken from 0 0.01 level. And the variance within is same and the number of observations are also the same. So the t value here is 2.719. So when we multiply 12.66 with 0.2 we have 2.532. When we take the square root of this one and we multiply it by the t value at 36 degree of freedom and 0 0.01 significance level, which is 2.719, we get our LST, which is 4.3265 in this case, right? So this is our LST at 0 0.01 significance level. So this has to be done for all the pair means which are significant at 0 0.05. But because in this case, the number of observations are same, so only this one value is going to be sufficient. Now we have to compare the mean differences with calculated LSD. So we are going to take the same table that we uh, made at the 0 0.05 significance level. So here you can see that we already have those samples which were significant at 0 0.05 labeled, and we also have labeled those samples which were non-significant, right? So how many samples do we have here? We have four samples, right? So we have four samples which are significant at 0 0.05. So therefore, at this stage, comparison is going to be made only for these four pairs. And the LST is 4.3265, right? So let's look at the first pair. It is The difference is 4.2, and we can see that this difference is less than the LST at 0 0.01. So what we are going to do with that, we are going to leave it as such because this is not significant at 0 0.01 level, right? It will remain significant at 0 0.05 and we are not going to remove this hysteric because this single hysteric notifies that this is significant at 0 0.05, right? Now the next uh, difference is 5, right? 
So the difference between sample number one and three means is five, and this is greater than LSD at 0 0.01. So what we are going to do with that is we are going to place another aesthetic, right? So now what is this double aesthetic means? So this double aesthetic means that this value is significant at the probability level of 0 0.01, right? So which in this case is LSD value of 4.3265. Then the next pair is sample number one and four and the difference is 8.2 which is also greater than LSD. So we are going to add another aesthetic over here. Then our fourth sample which we need to compare at this step is four and this is less than 4.3265 which is LSD at 0 0.01 so therefore we are not going to change it we're not going to add any hysteric over here and this is going to remain as such so now we are left with two samples which are highly significant and our further analysis will uh, will be made only on these two pairs right so the next step is to repeat the LSD calculation for 0 0.001, but only for those pairs which are significant at 0 0.01, right? And this is the same formula that we are going to use, only the T value is going to change, and that T value at 36 degree of freedom and 0 0.001 significance level is 3.582. So we multiply 12.665.2, we get the value 2.532, we take the square root of this value and multiply the answer by 3.582 and we get our LSD which is 5.6997 right so this is LSD or least significant difference at 0 0.001 significance level now in the next step what we are going to do is we are going to compare the mean differences with calculated least significant difference at 0 0.001 so we are taking the same table that we made at 0 0.01 level and here you can see that which pair means need to be compared at LSD of 0 0.001 these are these two mean pairs right so these two mean pairs they need to be compared because they were significant at 0 0.01 so let's look at the first one which is 5 and 5 is less than the calculated LSD at 0 0.001 level so therefore we are not going to change this one this is going to remain the same the next one is 8.2, which is difference between sample number 1 and sample number 4. This was also significant at 0 0.01. And let's see, it is higher or less here. So it is greater than LSD at 0 0.001. Therefore, we are going to add another aesthetic over here. Now, this third aesthetic, it notifies that the, this value is significant at 0 0.001, which means it is very highly significant, right? So this is how we do it. We're not going to check it for the other pairs, right? Because we have already sorted them out. So this is how we do LSD calculation at different levels. Now it is time to report the results of LSD analysis. So we are going to report them as such that this is a pairwise comparison of means through Fisher's least significant difference. So the difference between sample one and two is significant difference between sample 1 and 3 is highly significant. The difference between sample 1 and 4 is very highly significant. The difference between means of sample 2 and 3 is non-significant. The difference between samples 2 and 4 is significant. And the difference between samples 3 and 4 is non-significant. And now you can see that from the mean values as well, because the highest level of significance we can see is at the 8.2 level which is the difference between means of sample 1 and 4 and when we look at their mean values they also seem to be very much far apart from each other so now you can see that if we compare this one to ANOVA so in ANOVA we found the overall comparison that the overall uh, significant difference between the mean values and here we have demonstrated or elaborated in detail that which means are specifically different from each other so we found out that two pairs of means they are not significantly different from each other the four pairs are and even in those four pairs there are two pairs which are just significant there is one pair which is highly significant and there is one pair which is very highly significant. So now we can see their relative differences with each other. And there are different ways you can report your least significant difference results. So this is just one way that you're going to report them as such. 
that there is very highly significant difference between mean values of samples 1 and 4, probability is less than 0 0.001, and the difference between mean values of sample 1 and 3 is highly significant, probability is less than 0 0.01. Differences between mean values of samples 1 and 2 and samples 2 and 4 are significant, probability less than 0 0.05. While there is non significant difference, probability greater than 0 0.05 between mean values of samples 2 and 3 and between samples 3 and 4, right? So, this is just one way that you can report your results. So, this is how the post hoc test of ANOVA, which is known as least significant difference or Fisher's least significant difference, is performed. And remember that why this is performed because ANOVA is telling us that the means are different from each other, at least one mean is different, right? And the means are different in overall comparison. And when we have reject rejected our null hypothesis in ANOVA and we have found significant results in ANOVA, then we want to further elaborate that which mean pairs are specifically different from each other. And we chose, there are different uh, post hoc tests of ANOVA and we chose the Fisher's least significant difference because this is quite convenient to do and it gives us the detailed difference between the mean pairs and we found out that which pair of pairs of means are significantly different from each other, which are non-significantly different, which are highly significantly different and which are very highly significantly different. So that is why uh, we have performed this least significant difference because we can have a very detailed picture of the ANOVA, right? So this is it for today. And in the next lecture, we are going to do further exercises of LSD.